Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and today for all you ballers out there, what we're going to kind of do is take a little trip down memory lane, and everybody shows their holdbacks. We show our holdbacks, and holdbacks are exciting and great. What I want to do now is go back to when we first began and show you how our first holdbacks are doing now. So you can kind of see the growth that those snakes take, how long it takes you to get there, where they're at, and give you kind of an update on our first keeper babies. So, with that, we have to go back to when we first produced. We're not as old as a lot of you think we are. Well, age-wise, I'm getting old, but in breeding, I'm really not. So we started this in 2014, but remember my first clutch, the whole thing died, right? Really sad story. If anybody wants to know, I'll share it again one day. But 2015 was our first time producing, selling, and keeping reptiles. So we produced 15, 16, 17, and 18. In today's video, we're going to show you the babies from 15 and 16 and how they're doing and what size they are and how they look now to give you an idea of what you can expect for growth rate for your holdbacks and how they've held their color etc 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 the first one we ever kept was our first bay we ever produced 150101 and 150101 what makes him super special is he was literally the first snake that i ever hatched it's kind of cool when you get to keep your first holdback or your first baby ever anyway here he is he's not going to look too impressive he looks like you're probably thinking matt why'd you keep it normal well he's not just a normal he is actually 100% het for snow, so he is 100% het exanthic and also 100% het uh, albino. You can see he just shed. There's a few scales still on there that he's rubbing off, but all in all, really good looking snake, doing wonderful, growing really well. He's also a proven male. We've used him as a breeder before, and he's been successful. So he's doing phenomenal. 150101, we named him Era. We have named a lot of these, but not all. Get in there, buddy. Go on. You can also tell he's one of my first ones because he's super nice. Because I handle them all the time, right? Well, I also kept my second ever baby, 150102, because it was a project. They were produced by an unrelated pair of snakes, so I'm able to breed that brother sister together for the first time ever. Now, this will be her second year breeding. She did produce a clutch for us last year, 150102 did. However, we didn't get any snows. We got some visual albinos. We didn't get any exanthics in it either. So we're hoping in her second clutch we'll get more visual exanthics. And also we're hoping, really, really hoping, to be able to get some uh, snows. I do want to show you something interesting on her. The snake has a slight scar, if I can find it. I do believe it's just that dark spot right there. It actually healed up really, really nice. And you're probably thinking, okay, you always say you feed live, and your voice said you don't have a bunch of scarred up snakes, so why does that one have a scar? I'll never forget, she had an escape attempt where she got behind one of her old racks and had it pushed out a little bit and was crawling out and was stuck. And so I had to do some things to get her out of being stuck and do some work on that homemade rack to never make that happen again. That's one of the dangers of homemade equipment uh, we bought some homemade equipment that was really old, really used, and well loved, and she almost got out of it, and she did have a small injury from it. But all in all, she came out okay. So 150102, and she is a spider, 100% het for snow. Then we actually got to sell a few babies. So our next keeper was did from our second name? clutch. She does have a name, actually. We named her Nike, like the shoes. Uh, why? I don't know. We just picked it and kind of liked it. Then we have our next hold back, which is our first real project snake. This is something we really wanted to make, and we hit it on our second clutch. And that was, oh, and you're going to be in shed, so you're not going to look as pretty today. But that's okay. That's okay. She kind of looks a little drab today, guys, because you'll see she's in blue. But that is 150201, so the second clutch of the year. And this is our killer bee female. Now... She actually was ready to lay eggs in her first two years for a three-year-old snake. You can see she's got really good size. This is her third year breeding for us, so we're really, really excited. Because she had a clutch in six, or in, sorry, 17, and a clutch in 18. And of course, we're hoping to get a clutch out of her in 19 as well. And she has been being paired to our scaleless head male. So I absolutely love and adore this snake. She was that first big project, kind of our first, you know, really nice combo we ever hatched. And so Kurt's not mad at me. We did name her too. We call her Electra. Good there, girly. There you go. Now, we've only got one more snake we kept from 2015. Because when you're brand new, you're not producing a lot. So we didn't have a whole lot of holdbacks. 
And that is 150308. She is also in shed. And this is going to be her second year having eggs for us, we hope. And it's looking like it's going really, really well. And what she is, and again, she looks really, really dark, and you can see she's in blue. So she's not looking her best, but she is a female bumblebee. And she is again this year, just like last year, been bred to her calico. So I won't keep her out too long, because I want to put her back in there since she's in shed. And she looks a lot better and a lot brighter when she's not so dark. But you can actually see the swelling starting, so like right through there. I feel really good about her season coming up this year. All right, baby girl. Back in there you go. Go make daddy some babies, huh? Sometimes I feel like a snake pimp, you know. I'm just pimping these things out to different guys and <laughs> wanting them to make me some money. <laughs> it's kind of funny. All right, we're going to go to year 16 because we didn't have that many in 15. So we're going to cram, cram two years into this video. Now it is time for Kurt's favorite holdback of all time. Kurt, you know what this is going to be? He's shaking his head no. He always forgets that you guys can't see behind the camera. But it is. It's Eris. Eris, his absolute favorite snake. Not really. <laughs> what she is, is of course, a champagne. Now she's also possible calico. And you can see she's a little jumpier than the rest of them because by now I had enough snakes they weren't getting handled quite as frequently. But this will be her first year being bred as well, which causes her some stress. And you can see that growth there in the back end. So I'm really hopeful that she's going to lay for me. We'll just have to kind of keep our fingers crossed and see. And she's been put to another snake you're going to see that's not related to her, which is our lesser pastel male. Actually, you won't see it. Sorry. You won't see that one. You'll see a, one that's similar. But you can kind of see she's starting to get that good look to her as well. So get back in there, baby girl. I'm hoping to prove out that she's got calico in her. We'll see. I don't know for sure. It's really hard to tell, but we'll know when she has babies. Then came another one that I'm just over the moon about. And this is one of the nicest albinos I think anybody's going to see hands down. This is 160402. Look at that girl there. She's entering her first year of being breeding size, so hopefully she'll take. We're putting her to a Tofino. And, you know, when you have your holdbacks, they're always a little bit more special than the ones you buy. You're a little bit more knowledgeable about the individual animal because we've well, been with it since birth, right? Let me show you something cool on her. She has one melanistic freckle on her right there. That scale has had color. See, it's not dirt. and won't wipe off since she was born. That one little spot of melanin. A little slight paradox. But she is so cool. She doesn't have that same look yet like the other ones. Of swelling in the middle. But we're still hopeful. We'll see. Come on, baby girl. Ready to get back in there? Don't go in there. you go. And just the contrast on her is just beautiful. I love her colors. Uh, she was from an albino to an albino pairing. It was an albino male we had on loan that we no longer have. We borrowed it for the breeding year, then the gentleman asked us to sell it for him, so we did. Next up is 160502. This is very similar to what she's being paired with. However, this one's a female, and she's obviously being paired to a male. And this oh, is a lesser pastel. Now you can look in her belly right there, and you can see what we're talking about. She's starting to get that rounded look as she's starting to build towards ovulation, hopefully. And this snake I'm super excited about to be uh, breeding it. This is one I absolutely adore from the time it was hatched. I love how blush she is, how nice she is. This is a gorgeous example of a lesser pastel as an adult. And she is finally breed sized this year and we have paired her to our GHI male. So fingers crossed for some GHI lesser pastels which would be out of this world. You know, I love GHI with the bell complex. And you can just really get a good look. I mean, she is just absolutely gorgeous. And these first year breeders, I notice they almost like they don't know exactly what's going on with their body. So they tend to get just a little bit more cranky that first go around and a little bit more rigid and stiff, a little bit like, uh, leave me alone. Uh, but it, that's kind of normal. So 160601 is our next one. And let me tell you guys, this one that I know some of you absolutely love as much as I do, actually it's not. <laughs> that's the next one. 160601 though, to give you a little bit of a picture into what's coming next. This little guy here, now he's in shed, so you can see he's blue in the face, but he's really interesting because he's very dark on the size and like a normal spider. And the only genes we know that he has are spider. He also carries, he's het for exanthic and he's het for ghost. So he's 100% het for true ghost spider male. Very, very little white, but you can see how dark it is. And that darkness is really cool. And let me put him back up since he's in shed. 
and you're going to see a better example of that. He is a proven breeder, not a very big snake, but he did breed for us last year about 650 grams and did a rock star job. Let me show you his sister. We bred her last year, but she didn't produce. It was a very, very late breeding. Uh, this year, we're breeding her a lot more frequently. We're hoping she'll produce. And her number is 160604. Most of you just know her as the darkness. Now, she looks like she's got a lump in her, but that's higher up in the body. That's actually a meal she's still digesting. And you can just see, now this, like I say, this snake we know to be 100%, why are you cranky today, huh? Het true ghost, okay? So it can produce ghost, it can produce exanthic. We don't know anything else that's in there. But what I will show you is that is a fresh shed snake. So she just shed her skin very, very recently. I want you to pay close attention to those colors. You have to keep her up there for me, Kurt, while I'm digging around in here. Because everybody's like, oh, it looks like a normal. This is a traditional normal look. And when you put the two of those together, the difference in the melanin is night and day. How black the blacks are, how dark the lights are. Hi, baby girl. And then the bellies. I know, I know. You can see how dark that belly is versus how not dark that belly is. So a very, very interesting snake. We're really hoping that she proves out to have something else going on. And she's brother to the spider with the dark sides. So the chances are certainly there. And we'll be pairing her up. Actually, probably today is her day to get paired up. But I am super... And look at that weird green in her. One of the oddest snakes I've ever hatched is this girl here. So that is the one we just call the darkness because of how dark her skin is. And that wraps up our holdbacks from 2015 to 2016. I'm sure on next week, you can probably guess what's coming, and we'll show you everything we held back in 17. And 17 by itself will equal the number of holdbacks, or close to it, from two years, because as you expand, it gets more and more. You have more babies, you have more things you can hold back, more projects you're getting into, you'll see more recessive stuff. Certain things will pop out in that next video, like my boy Zeus. So that's kind of where we're at. Kurt, do you have any questions? Yeah, so in this, you're breeding some um, double het yes. recessives. Mm -hmm. So since they're het, what's the chances of them, uh, what's the odds of them producing a, uh, uh, getting both hets to hit up? So you want to know the odds about a double recessive visual? Yeah. You'd have to ask me that because that's i got to think for a second here, and I may be wrong because I didn't look this up before and this has really put me on the spot. I want to say it's about 1 in 16, and that's because, you know, you have a 50% chance for each one of those genes to pass on from each individual snake. And so, like, if you're breeding two genes together, it's always a 1 in 4 of getting the combo. One well, here, I need to basically get both parents to pass on two separate genes. So I need them to each pass that on so I want to say it's about 1 in 16 um, I could be off on that though I may have to I actually have to look that and look at that for a second to really think about it but uh, all right so anyway I'm gonna go with 1 in 16 it could be off it could be 1 in 32 uh, we'll see because it's, it's 1 in 8 I didn't want to be to now you're gonna make me think for a second uh, I think it actually is 1 in 32 now that I think about it. So I have to actually run the numbers on that. My brain is pretty good at that, but not perfect. Any other questions? No. All right, so it's long. That's all you need to know. It's long odds, but it's worth doing because even though the odds are long, those double recessive animals are very, very rare. Very few people work those projects to the end. And so, you know, you, they did early on when there was a big money in it. But now that there's not as big of a money in something like a snow or even a true ghost, which still commands a decent price, but it's not this big money drive, and to have those long odds to get that animal makes it not as necessarily worth taking that risk. But it's an animal that I really want to produce. I want to see that. I want to cut that egg open and have that baby in there that I made. So for me, it's, it's worth doing, even though it's not necessarily maybe smart odds in Vegas, so to say. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See you next week.